what happens after 10 seasons of a career mode in F1 23? Which driver will win the most championships? Can Red Bull be stopped by one of the other teams? Can Alonso win a championship with Aston Martin? Can Tottenham finally win a trophy? So I started a My Team career mode so that I could sim through and observe the 10 other teams to see what would happen. And despite Sergio Perez winning the first race of the season in Bahrain, it was a Max Verstappen masterclass as he won 10 races in the season to win the very first title. And just 12 races into the season, Leclerc couldn't take it at Ferrari anymore and he joined his childhood best friend at Red Bull, causing Perez to go to McLaren and Lando Norris to be reunited with Carlos Sainz at Ferrari. Oh, Ferrari. Red Bull won the Constructors' Championship despite a late challenge from Mercedes and with a regulation change on its way as well, this would be a sign of things to come. Unfortunately, Fernando Alonso retired before Season 2 and he was replaced by Alex Albon which allowed Liam Lawson to join Williams. At the Monaco Grand Prix, Leclerc finally managed to break the curse and win his home race. However, this turned out to be one of just two races this season that wasn't won by a Mercedes driver as Mercedes won a record 91% of races. Lewis Hamilton and George Russell shared an incredible championship battle in 2024 but at the end of the season, something very strange happened. So going into the penultimate round, Hamilton was leading his teammate by 22 points in the driver standings. He then DNF'd in Las Vegas and fully just retired from F1 before the final race in Abu Dhabi, even though he was still actually able to win the championship. This then allowed George Russell to win his first championship and caused the silliest of silly seasons as Sergio Perez joined Mercedes and then Bottas replaced him at McLaren and then Tsunoda replaced him at Alfa Romeo and then Kevin Magnus replaced him at Alfa Tauri and then Lance Stroll replaced him at Haas and then Nico Hülkenberg replaced him at Aston Martin and then Nick De Vries replaced him at Haas and then Terry Porsche joined F1 to replace him at Alfa Tauri. There was also some interesting stuff beginning to happen in terms of car performances as Ferrari and Aston Martin made some big upgrades but there were once again some regulation changes at the end of the season to mix things up a bit. There weren't any other driver moves at the start of season 3 and Pierre Gasly won the first race of the season despite Alpine having the fourth quickest car at the time. Red Bull and Ferrari both won their first races for two years and in Brazil we saw a podium of Lando Norris, Liam Lawson and Yuki Tsunoda which was pretty interesting to be honest. Despite leading the standings for almost all of the season, Alex Albon unfortunately did an Arsenal and slipped up towards the end of the season which allowed George Russell to take his second championship. Nico Hülkenberg left F1 before season 4, which once again caused a merry-go-round with half the grid as Nick De Vries went to Aston Martin, Zhou Guan Yu and Logan Sargent went to Haas, Drogovic and Sonoda went to Williams, Lawson and Piastri went to Alfa Romeo and Theo Porsche went to McLaren. George Russell won most races in the first half of the season, but then following the Hungarian Grand Prix, he won just one more race, while Verstappen then won six races and stole the title from Russell. At this point, most teams had maxed out their cars, but a regulation change at the end of the season should mix things up for season five. There weren't any driver moves in the fifth season and it ended up being a title fight between George Russell and Charles Leclerc in the Red Bull but Russell left no space for competition and he won his third championship. There was an interesting result at Singapore where Porsche and Liam Lawson got on the podium but other than that it was a fairly uneventful season to be honest. At the end of the season though Bottas and Perez retired from F1 which opened up a seat at Mercedes. Esteban Ocon returned to Mercedes but as a full-time driver this time, meaning Alex Albon joined Alpine, Nick De Vries joined McLaren and Dennis Hauger got an F1 seat with Williams while Drogovic and Jack Doohan took the empty seats at Aston Martin. And in Bahrain, Esteban Ocon proved that he didn't need Bottas to go bowling in order to win a race as he won the season opener with Mercedes. He then went on to win another four races this season which actually ended up being enough for him to win the championship. He had the same amount of wins as George Russell but as Russell knows very well consistency is key and that is what helped Ocon to become the first French champion since the man himself Alain Prost and I have to say the rookies all had amazing seasons with both Aston Martin drivers becoming race winners and Dennis Hauger dragging his Williams to a podium at Mexico. I think in recent years the standards for rookies in F1 have dropped and I've absolutely no idea why to be honest. 
Like, all of the rookies in past seasons have just been so good and have always been so good at proving on track why they got into F1. So yeah, it's nice to see some rookies succeeding in F1. At the end of the season, Carlos Sainz decided to retire from Ferrari, meaning next season, there was an open seat at Ferrari. And that Ferrari seat was filled by Carlos Sainz, who despite clearly announcing his retirement, decided to stay at Ferrari to carry on not winning any races. So um, yeah, I don't know what that was about to be honest. The only other driver move was Yuri Vips, who joined F1 to replace Logan Sargent at Haas. There had been some regulation changes ahead of season seven, which caused Williams to start the season with the fastest car on the grid, and Dennis Hauger ended up winning the season opener in Bahrain to write his name in history alongside some of the greatest ever F1 drivers to win a race with Williams. However, the Williams pace didn't last and it ended up being a title fight between both Mercedes drivers and there was only one point separating them with four races to go. But ultimately, it was George Russell who came out on top to win the championship yet again. Kevin Magnussen retired before season eight and he was replaced by Logan Sargent who made his return to F1. What's up America, let's bring that energy. Set my balls, mate. This time though, the title fight was between Verstappen and George Russell. And by the way, for some reason this whole time, George Russell just doesn't have teeth. Like every time I've seen him on the podium, he literally just doesn't have teeth. Um, so yeah, I'm not quite sure what that's about. It was another close fight with them both being on equal points following the sprint race in Sao Paulo. But once again, George Russell stepped up to take the championship and become a five time world champion. However, his dominance in F1 would be challenged the following season. Alex Albon lost his F1 seat ahead of season 9 as Dennis Hauger went to Alpine, De Vries went to Williams, Joe Guan Yu went to McLaren and Iwasa joined F1 to go to Haas. Lando Norris won the first race of the season with Ferrari but it was a former Ferrari driver Charles Leclerc who won the championship with Red Bull to become the fourth different driver to win in this career mode. Sainz left F1 for real this time and Alex Albon returned to take the open Ferrari seat while Richard for sure made his debut in F1 with Alfa Romeo. For the first time in a while there was a regulation change ahead of the season and it actually meant that McLaren had the fastest car at the start of the season. However they weren't able to capitalise on their pace and the career mode finished the same way it started with Verstappen dominating all season and taking his third championship in 10 seasons. So there we go, that is all 10 seasons done and on screen now is the overall standings of the 14 different race winners in this career mode. I actually wanted to do the standings of every driver who took part but annoyingly the career mode just deleted itself like straight after the final Abu Dhabi Grand Prix so I am actually missing some stats for some of the drivers towards the back of the grid. But anyway it was George Russell who had more points, wins and championships than any other driver but it wasn't too dominant with both Red Bull drivers putting up a good fight and winning some championships as well. Esteban Ocon winning a championship was a very nice surprise but I do wonder if a slightly better driver in that Mercedes seat could have challenged Russell a bit more. Of course no disrespect to Esteban Ocon but I reckon if Leclerc went to Mercedes instead of Red Bull I think he could have won a few more titles to be honest. The Aston Martin drivers all did very well and Alex Albon wasn't even too far off a championship himself in the third season. Three drivers won just one race including Liam Lawson who took his first race win in the final ever race of the career mode. The overall constructor standings were very interesting as despite Mercedes having 32 more race wins and 700 more points than Red Bull they both had five constructors championships each. I also I find it crazy how close Ferrari and Aston Martin are as after 230 races they are only separated by 30 points. Eight different teams got onto the podium, seven of which got onto the top step of the podium as race winners and Alpha Tauri by the way had an absolute stinker. They got one point in season one and another point in season two and just decided it was their day off but for the next eight years which was um, pretty interesting. But yeah, that is it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed. Feel free to comment any questions about this career mode, like how a driver I haven't mentioned did or whatever. But otherwise, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.